Good morning. Welcome to live stream number 105. This is our one year anniversary uh, since the big shutdown. So, um, uh, and that was our last tour with Ernie. Ended on March 13th. We came back um, uh, on the 16th. We bid a fond farewell to Ernie and Patricia and put them on the train. And so ended our tour. So uh, this is the big anniversary, one year, life's dream, number 105, Breakfast with Ernie, part two. And Ernie is telling some wonderful stories about his tour with the Rolling Stones, Lee Rittenauer. You'll see, it's a total delight. Ernie and Patricia, Breakfast here's with Ernie. Ernie. <laughs> with Ernie story oh. time. <laughs> I'm having lunch with Ernie now <laughs> it may be the afternoon snack yes. <laughs> yeah. brunch I see my cup what it says oh, oh. that's great <laughs> 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 um. well it's been this is the 53rd week. Wow. We did breakfast with Ernie. Yep. That's right. One year. Nothing's changed. <laughs> Except nothing happened. <laughs> nothing happened in that one year. Be almost nothing. There is one big thing that happened. Mm. You guys went home. Well, right. yeah. Yeah, that was a big thing. Well, we had the ticket to go home before this all happened, so we just kept it. That's right. And, yeah. and we hung out at your thing. house until the yeah. ticket was happening. And That's right. Then we went. That's right. Yeah. Another yeah. big thing happened, too. We both got some rest. Yeah. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> That's right. So that was good. That was yeah. That was good. Yeah. 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 One, one day, Ernie woke up. And he says to me in the living room, he wanders through and he says, you know, I think I'm rested now. <laughs> he said, I, I'm not sure because I forgot what it felt like. <laughs> I, haven't been I haven't been rested since I was 16. <laughs> First time is basically <laughs> true. <laughs> Basically, exactly. I've been arrested a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily we can't say that. But but I told somebody the other day I was telling them the story of Ernie's work life and why this was not all bad for us. That he started um, when he went on the road with with Buddy Rich, which was what 1966 or something. Yeah, something 67, something like that. And then worked straight through after that and then when he was in the studios there was a period from like what there was like a 10-year period where you would go up to canada every summer and have two months off he would take two months off because his family wanted to go to canada every year and so he rested during those two months but that ended in like what 1980 yeah yeah yeah, 80, 81. So he's had almost 40 years of not enough sleep until this happened. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, we, um, we, I don't think we ever changed a light bulb in our house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't here long enough for anything to burn out. <laughs> it's just like yeah. I'm changing one like every week. <laughs> something is burning out something is you know is breaking something's happening because we're not here to break anything or have anything burn out i think they they froze and it might be our fault uh-oh so should we call back
Where are we? We <laughs> we Let's are see. sometime at we... like four o'clock or something. Not by now. This is supposed to be breakfast with Ernie. That's okay. <laughs> Details. It's one. It's one twenty-four here. <laughs> but it's still it's still breakfast with Ernie because, because we we're haven't having had it breakfast. yet. <laughs> <laughs> All this stuff, you know, I was trying to get the dentist to get an appointment. So we, and then Ernie was doing some bills. And so we never started eating yet. We just had coffee. Oh man, you must be starving. <laughs> <laughs> starving with Ernie. <laughs> starving with Ernie, yes. <laughs> Having trouble losing weight? Watch, starving with Ernie. <laughs> so uh, just keep doing stuff and never get up from your chair. <laughs> this is good. Mm -hmm. right. This works fine. This works fine. Fantastic. So, yeah, we were just saying, you know, it was uh, exactly a year. Um, it was. Took Excuse you, me, guys. We took you to the train station and did a sad farewell and and ended our um, our tour. Six week tour. Is your for what is it? Uh, for Scythia? Or, no, no, it's your um, hysteria. hysteria. Yeah, is that in bloom? It's just starting to bloom. We've got like three blooms, you know, blooms in these long strands. Purple strands. Purple strands. And so it's just starting to, it's just starting to go for it. Wow. So. Sounds beautiful. Early. Our area is just, just starting to bloom. Area <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. blooming. <laughs> area, yeah. After a year, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. that's pretty good. You held off the bloom for a whole year because the virus was around mm -hmm. for weeks before we even knew that's that there right. was a virus. That's right. And that's we're right. out there talking with people and hugging yeah. people and, and doing right. gigs, and sitting outside and having dinner. And that's we didn't know. Yeah, that's and right. Kissing. And Kissing people on going their lips. On, going on, well, right. going on planes, trains, and automobiles, and right. yep, sitting in groups, all close together, all having those fun. Things. All yep. those things we can do now. <laughs> and when I got yeah, home, not a clue. So yeah, so the, what a what a year, and it's sort of an Ernie Ernie and Patricia year because we were on this great tour mm. of the Virgin. Well, that started up. North in Wisconsin. And what? That's yeah. right. That's right. In, in Michigan. Michigan. And at the yeah. city winery. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. city winery. That was And fun. then uh, the St. John and the Virgin Islands. Then you and I did Tortola. Then you and I did Cocoa Beach. Right. That's right. That was our yeah. last gig. It wasn't supposed to be our last gig, but it was. Oh, okay. So, you know, and the whole end of our tour was like being chased through the forest by the Sasquatch, <laughs> right? It's like every every gig we did yep. was the last gig. That's right. Right? We do a gig, they close a club. That's right. We do a gig, they close the restaurant, you know? And it was like we were going, ah, ah, you know? <laughs> and you think that nobody, nobody <laughs> would no, no. Paint an artist, run faster <laughs> than you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you think nobody would hire us after that because they know, oh, don't hire those guys. Then your club has to close. <laughs> <laughs> but it, we played at the Rouse Center, the, the big yep. Beautiful, right. yep. uh, theater, and that was their last concert. And nobody knew it was going to be their last concert until surprise it was. And we yeah. ended up being the late. Yeah. And when we were in St. John and we were having our dinner after the concert, mm. our, yeah. our uh, Kim, our presenter, said, "You know, I have another concert coming up after you guys. I, but I really, I really wish yours was the last one. That we, we could as big like this. We'd go out well, on a really big high note. Well, it was her last one. <laughs> <laughs> you got her wish. The only yeah. thing that happened was, I'm sure that you were really sorry that you didn't get to drive." hysterically straight to Minneapolis in the snow, do the concert and then drive hysterically straight in the snow back to Chicago. That was a real loss. Well, that was a high point we, we, we missed. Yes. Yeah. We were going we to yeah. do that, weren't we? And then Arizona. Yeah. Right. And then Arizona, but the same people. 
Yes, yes. The, same yeah, people. Same uh, Lowell. Lowell. <laughs> yes, <and laughs> he called and he says hello. And I was really looking forward, actually, uh, to us doing the Music Instrument Museum. Yeah. Mim is really Mim cool. Mim is great. You'll really like that. Or, but, but it would be a first for Corky. And I was so looking forward because Lowell had al always talked about it. It's an amazing place. It is. You'll really like it. Yeah. And then the, the performing arts center that he built on the side of it where you'd play, that's it's really good sound and it's just it's very enjoyable. Yeah, I was I was disappointed we didn't get to uh, do that, especially. <laughs> but I love the Dakota as well. I mean, the food is amazing, but um, driving in a blizzard is probably <laughs> yeah. not quite as uh, endearing and fun. As, uh, uh, we don't want to do that. We've we've already done all of that. However, so I'm wondering. So, Kurt, oh, yeah. congratulations to him. He got a Grammy got a last Grammy. night. Oh, great. We wondered. Great. We, wondered. we wondered. Go for him. So it's out now. I want to see if John Beasley won something. He's Best a friend of ours. jazz vocalist. Surprise. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Excellent. Good, good, good. That's his second Grammy. And, and you, you were you a part of uh, one of those, weren't you? The first the Grammy. First yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the jazz at which one? Kennedy Center or Lincoln Center? It was New York. So Kennedy Center. Right. Okay. I mean, excuse me, Lincoln Center. Lincoln Center. He yeah. won't forgive you for that slip up. <laughs> yeah, either one, you know, <laughs> I will take him. <laughs> well, he was doing, you know, a tour that yeah. we were on and they did both those places. Yeah, it's so, great. So Ernie. Ernie. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you this <laughs> question because I know that our, our viewers. <laughs> Hi, viewers. <laughs> oh, that's right. You're out there. Hello. <laughs> Would be interested in knowing what you're thinking. Nothing. <laughs> I've been meditating <clears throat> for 40 years, and I finally got to the point of inner peace, of illumination. And so now when I'm thinking, I'm thinking of nothing. All right. And so therefore is inner peace. Mm -hmm. I'm almost there. I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking of something that means entirely nothing. <laughs> That's very close. Yeah. Yes. And then the next thing, after you guys get that all together, then you have to start working on outer peace. That's right. Right. Next. Out of body experiences, but first inner body experiences. <laughs> Correct. Out of body, out of mind. Well, you already got the out of mind part. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Inner, inner body experiences and outer limits. I, I think I got the nothing part down. Oh, we've been thinking, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> well, you know, it's like when you get to that place, mm. you're either thinking of absolutely nothing or you're thinking of everything in the universe at the mm. same time. Mm -hmm. So then it becomes a concept of perception. Mm. So that's where we all are. Most of us don't know that. So that's why we do what we do, trying to figure that out. Right. But once we figure that out, then we don't really have to do anything. Do you think playing harmonica will help me? I think it's helped you immensely. <laughs> Even now, I think it's I think it's helped you immensely. Maybe it's time for me to move to the banjo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was thinking more like tuba. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the other thing about films and records and all of that. You can work all day on a project and then when they use it and put it out, they cut you out. They just take you out. 
you know, or as a saxophonist, as a horn player on, you know, hundreds of dates, they have sections where you play. And then on the end, they have a long fade section where you play a solo and uh, they cut all that out, too. A lot of times, you know, or you have a fade solo at the end and you're playing along and playing along. And as soon as the disc jockey hears the here's the instrumental solo, they start to fade the board. Yep. Yeah. They bow you out. Years of that. Yep. Uh, <laughs> What was the one where the years of that? What was the one where you were doing the one film and then they would get a different? Oh, I did a very famous Richard Pryor film called The Toy. And I was a solo saxophonist on that. And they had four composers Mm -hmm. on that film. And they would they would record. They call us in. We record the film. Mm -hmm. And then two weeks later, they call me back. And there'd be another composer and I'd play on that. And then three weeks later, there'd be another call and there'd be another composer. I think the eventual composer on this was Pat Williams. And uh, I think he he was finally the last composer. But I was like featured soloist in this film. And I guess the producer liked the way I played. But they changed the composer, they changed the orchestra and everything, and I go back, and it would be a whole different thing, you know. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm going, oh, okay. <laughs> but you know, it's like when I joined Buddy Rich. You know, I joined Buddy Rich. I was supposed to only be there for a week because Buddy had to get from uh, Boston to uh, New York, and they figured they'd call Berkeley and get a kid to that to, to help them finish up this gig in Boston and go to New York. And then they were going to get a real adult saxophone player. Yeah, the other player. alto player. Quit yeah, they weren't going to get a real adult saxophone <laughs> player. And I was with Buddy Rich for like two and a half years. So I guess they couldn't find a real adult saxophone player. <laughs> That's what they say about musicians, right? Well, we might be <laughs> want to be, um, you want to be a musician when you grow up? And uh, right. he says you can't That's have right. <laughs> That's right. They say, okay, you know, the kid says to his dad, he says, Daddy, I want to be a musician when I grow up. And his dad looked at him and he said, son, you can be one or the other. That's right. <laughs> 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 so what are some of the tours that you remember that were um Really crazy. Oh, this tour. Oh, lots of tours going back, going way back. Mm-hmm. I went to Africa with Oliver Nelson mm-hmm. on a State Department tour. That was kind of cool. Really, and yeah. uh, he was a great, great player. And we were in, uh, it was called Southwest Africa, French Equatorial Africa at that particular time because the French were getting ready to leave Africa. And we did this and we went over and we did this tour uh, uh, concerts for uh, the public and also concerts for all of the ambassadors also. And we were there for three months. We were in Chad, Niger, Cameroon, Mali, Senegal, all of those areas. And we and we played. And so. It was amazing. The yeah. people were amazing. And then the thing that got me was this was 1969. Oh. And the thing that got me was all of the people, all of the public, they were wearing James Brown t shirts. <laughs> they loved James Brown in Africa. He was happening. In Get Africa. on your bad, bad foot. Yeah. We did, yeah. yeah. Get on the good foot. On the good so, foot. So anyway, that was quite a thing. And I played with a lot of African musicians, you know, with the balaphone players, you know, which is like a which is like sort of a vibraphone. Okay. Kind of an instrument. It's a mallet instrument. And the chora players, and they were like the chora is sort of like an af- an, an African harp. Wow. You know, and it's strung like that. Beautiful instruments. And uh it was very a uh, uh, very incredible tour. 
came back and this was before their, you know, they had terrible droughts in that area after that. And this was before the droughts and it was, oh, uh, it was incredible. Yeah. 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 I, I remember being in uh, Niger, <laughs> which is, which was on the uh, border of the desert, the Sahara desert. And I went out and I let, I went out, I went for a walk out in the desert from this one place we were playing with this, this, this one, uh, a big concert we were doing and it was so it was the most quiet I've ever been anywhere you know it was just incredible yeah in the desert it was incredible Uh, where did you see the Sahara Desert yeah yeah it was yeah it was the the edge of the Sahara and 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 did you say, I bet the stars were incredible. Yeah, the stars were incredible. And we were in, you know, we were staying there in a hotel on the on the edge of the desert. And you'd see these camel caravans come in full of salt, 30, 40 ca- camels, you know, all of that kind of thing. So that was an amazing trip. And uh, let's see what else I toured with uh, Marvin Gaye. We did concerts. Gordon. So we did a lot of I did a lot of R and B things with him. Um, Zappa, Frank Zappa. We didn't tour, but I recorded a lot with Frank when he was doing the orchestral pieces. You know, I recorded with uh, right. I recorded with Frank and the Los Angeles Philharmonic Orchestra, and Zubin Mehta was conducting. You know, so he came over to me and he started talking to me in Hindi. Because he thought I was Indian. <laughs> no way. That's wild. Yeah. So that was kind of fun. <laughs> Ernie's like the universal man. Whatever yeah. country he's in, unless it's like Norway, they all think I'm from there. he's from there. Yeah. You no. Know? As long as I keep my mouth shut. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, just not. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, let's see what else. Don uh, Rickles on the Tonight Show, he thought Ernie was Hispanic, right. so he just tried to do some so he Hispanic tried to do, joke with yeah, him, which tried of course to do did not some work. Of his, uh, <laughs> yeah, some of his uh, strange humor. And then in Asia, everybody thinks he's like Malaysian or or right. Singaporean or something. Right. It's just wherever he is, they think he's them. So you never, so, told us, <laughs> you never told us about, and I'm wondering why. And maybe you have a reason uh, about the Rolling Stones. Oh, it was good. It was great. Um, that was what happened was that was 1980, 81. And I have been working with Quincy Jones pretty continually. I did all of Quincy's projects, the dude and stuff with uh, Mike, some of the stuff with Michael Jackson and some of the stuff with the brothers Johnson and all of those people. And we were touring some too. So uh, the Stones had already had their rehearsals and they were on the road Mm -hmm. and they had a saxophone player with them who uh, wasn't doing too well you know it's like uh buddy rich used to say all i need you for is four hours a day out of the 24 24 hours out of the 24 all you've got to be able to do is show up wear shoes you know play your parts and 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 the other 20 hours you can set your hair on fire and jump out of the window it doesn't <laughs> really matter i'm just i just want you there four hours a night you know and prepare and some people had trouble getting they had so much fun in that other 20 hours yeah. that they couldn't get the four together at all <laughs> so Anyway, the Stones were on the road and they had a saxophone player with them that was having so much fun that other 20 hours that he was having trouble making the gig. So Mick Jagger called Quincy and asked him who he would recommend. And Quincy recommended me. So I went to this hotel in Brentwood in L.A. and uh, I met uh, Keith and I met Charlie and I met Mick and uh, we 
they gave me a pile of records. Yep. You know, they said, well, we've re- we've already rehearsed for three months. That's what they do. You know, we, they rehearsed for three months. They were on tour. Yeah. And so they said, you know, we we want you to uh, we want you to learn these things. And they gave me a whole bunch of records. And so I took their records home and I listened to them. And it was the blues and D and the blues and E and the blues and G and the blues and A. And I figured okay, well, I think I can probably do that. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so I went to my first concert with them, which was my audition. And it was in San Diego at the Coliseum there. And it was for 80,000 people, right? Okay. So I'm standing in front of 80,000 people and I'm having my audition with the Stones. So uh, I guess I got the gig because I was there for three or four months. You know, yeah, to the, the to the end of the tour, I did an album with them called uh, Still Life. And I did a, a documentary mm-hmm. with them called Let's Spend the Night Together. That's right. And uh, I would have gone on. They asked him to go to Europe. They asked me to go to Europe. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mick called and asked to go to Europe. And I had a tour with the group with uh, Quincy at the same time. So I, I, I told Mick, well, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it because I've got this thing with Quincy. And I was feeling loyalty to Quincy because he had got me the gig with the Stones. Yeah. So then I told Quincy. Right. And Quincy said, oh, man, you should have done that tour. You know, and I turned it down for him. And he's telling me, no, you should have gone. You should have gone. So (laughs) now he tells you. you. (laughs) Right. So now he tells me. In the long run, Ernie feels that that was probably a great idea. Yeah, probably saved my life. (laughs) Because uh, speaking of having fun, uh, a lot of fun was. Yeah, I was having a lot of fun, too. (laughs) So anyway, fun was part of the whole deal. So anyway, that was the uh, that was that tour. And then, you know, I toured for years and years with Lee Rittenauer. I toured I toured for like 17 or 18 years off and on with Lee. We did a lot of tours and a lot of records. You know, we started playing together in 1970. Uh, three or four wow. at this little club in uh, this little club in L.A. called the Baked Potato. We oh, were yeah. worked. We were worked there every Tuesday. Right. Oh. Every Tuesday we worked at the Baked Potato. And it was me and Lee and Dave Grusin would play piano or Patrice Russian would play piano. It would alternate of uh, uh, uh Abe Abe Laboreal played bass, you know, it was just it was it was a really great band. So we would have to take more than one train typically to get to these places. And you had to. I mean, we they were allowing like five minutes between trains. We had 14 pieces of luggage. Yeah, we had a tag team. We had a tag team when we got someplace with 14 pieces of luggage. Right. And there were four of us. The band was a trio. And Patricia, so two of us got off the train and two of us were on the train and we start hauling bags off the train to the other people. We could get 14 bags off of the train in like 12 seconds. Yeah, we got it down after a while. Wow. Yeah. We, two, 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 people always were on, two people, same two people were always off and we had we had them in order. Because, I mean, these included things. So we had the throwers like and the catchers. Instruments and everything yeah. else. So and then <laughs> our, our favorite part, I think, well, there were two favorite parts. One was the part where they got us all to the other train. The guy on the first train got us to the second train. And we're on the train. And, oh, boy, we got all our stuff on the train. And the train broke down. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun then we had to go to this other train all of a sudden and a guy took us through the tunnels where the where the freight people went and all of this that was exciting then the other train and they didn't tell us this it's not in the schedule it goes from um copenhagen up into sweden and then you change trains in sweden we were supposed to end up in norway, norway. 
it. And, and that was supposed to be the last gig. We'd mm-hmm. gone through all this stuff and none of us had died or anything. We still had all our bags. So, so we got on that train and we were so tired that we just all fell out, right? And then it, the light came up in the morning and we all were looking around and, and the train's going like this. It's going back and forth. And we realize we look out the window and there's nothing out the window. We're in a ship. We're on a ferry. <laughs> We're on this huge ferry, which I'm we had no idea we would the train to, went go from, to go to, to Sweden. Oh, and then it's possible to get to and Sweden. And they just took the whole train on the ferry. Yeah, we wondered why there were only three cars. Yeah. So it would fit on the ferry. So so we got there and, and took us all off on into Sweden. And then we got to this little town that was not a stop on the train. It was it was um, Ed, E-D was the name of the town. And they pronounced it Id in Sweden. And we just stopped <laughs> there. And it wasn't a stop. And then and the train stopped moving. Nothing happened. And the night before, there had been this great big storm that had come through all of this whole area. And unbeknownst to us, it knocked out all the power between uh, along the border, the Swedish-Norwegian border. And these were electric trains. Uh-oh. So there we are in, in, in Id. And boat. finally, a lady came through. Town called Id, right? Town called Id, yes. I took many <laughs> pictures of that sign while we were sitting there for four hours. So um, a, a lady would come through once in a great while from the trains, and we would say, how's it going? You know, what's happening? And she goes, well, you see those buses? And we looked out the window, and here were all these, like, city buses or tour buses or something parked out there. We said, yes. And she said, we are trying to find the drivers of those buses. And we said, okay. <laughs> Another couple hours to go by. She'd come through again. How's it, how's it going with the drivers? Well, we found, found the drivers. Oh, that's good. Where are they? They're on the buses on the other side of the power outage. So there were buses coming across the border also in addition to the trains. But they couldn't get through either. So they were shunting people. Well, the idea was they would take everybody off the other train and everybody off our train (laughs) and and like trade trains. But they didn't have any any drivers for these buses. So what we ended up having to do is wait for that first bus from the other side to come all the way across from Norway to us. And then all those people got off. We got on. Then they drove us all back. By that time, it was getting dark. This was the last gig. And when we got on the other side, then they put us on that other train. That train backed all the way up to, um, um, what's the name of that city? It's the biggest city in Norway. Um, Copenhagen. No, that's, uh, no, no, that's Denmark. Denmark. <laughs> Anyways, it's the New biggest York. city. <laughs> no. Biggest city in Norway. And so we got there. And we- <laughs> Your Hagen needs to be adjusted. And so, so um, it, was, it was wonderful, though, because we got there. There was somebody from the club waiting right there, of course. The gig was for 9 p.m. We got in at 8.45. We couldn't even go to the, to the hotel and leave our bags off, nothing. We had to take everything with us. He got us in these taxis, and he took us to the club. And they got there and they put their instruments together and they got on stage and they hit right at nine. They didn't miss a moment. <laughs> so that was probably one of our more amazing tours. Was, was that one. We lost eight pounds on that gig. Yes, we did on that tour. Yeah. <laughs> tour we lost eight pounds. A piece. <laughs> a piece. Without dieting. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Incredible. Uh, that was really amazing. That is incredible. That's oh, and when we were going to get off the one train and go to the other train, um, oh God, what's the name of the bass player? Oh, Jeff Berlin. Jeff Berlin. Jeff was so tired that he went in an, in a compartment with nobody in it and laid down on the floor and fell asleep. And when we were doing our loadout, we realized, oh, we're missing somebody. <laughs> <laughs> we got all the stuff out anyway, onto the onto the platform. But then we went, wait, where's Jeff? 
and and the train was going to leave right oh, wow. it's going north without us and so so running up and down outside and i looked in one of the windows and saw him lying on the floor i went he's in here on the window so we're all beating on the window jeff <laughs> he hit the berlin wall <laughs> yes, he, did. he sat up and he went ah! he ran out the door <laughs> Good thing it wasn't moving, right? Yes, yes. Well, that would have been it. I don't know what we would have done then. He would have had to go up to the next stop, get off, get back somehow. Well, I think we made it to dinner with Ernie. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. Thanks so much. This was really Do fun. Do you think you got enough material? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really fun. <laughs> Thanks. A lot of stories I have not heard, too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You got a million of them. A million of them. There are a million of them. <laughs> and they're really funny in retrospect. Yes. <laughs> not so funny then, right? That was not so funny then. <laughs> yeah, it's really funny now. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, guys.